The newest candidate in the Republican race for U.S. president was asked about the document's investigation during a CNN town hall several hours ago, and Mike Pence did pull some punches. The former vice president said he does not want to see the Justice Department indict his former boss. He argued it would be divisive to the country and would send a terrible message to the world. Listen. I had no business having classified documents in my residence. And I took full responsibility for it. President Biden had no business having him in his residence from when he was vice president as well. And the same with former President Trump. But I, I would just hope that uh, there would be a way for them to move forward without the dramatic and drastic and divisive step of indicting a former president of the United States. We've got to find a way to move our country forward and, and restore confidence in equal treatment under the law in this country. Joining me now from L.A., Carolyn Hellman, professor of critical theory and social justice at Occidental College, and she is a Democratic strategist. And from Washington, Charlie Dent, former Republican congressman and executive director of the Aspen Institute Congressional Program. Uh, we are in full swing, believe it or not, in this GOP campaign. You know, Mike Pence, for a man who spent years sidestepping side criticism of his former boss, I mean, he acted like it was a landmine every time he had to open his mouth. He is leaning into criticism a little bit more, but not that much. How much, Charlie, I'll go to you first. How much do you think this will work uh, for his campaign at this point? Well, to win a, a presidential campaign or any campaign for that matter, you know, a candidate needs to draw a sharp contrast. Uh, particularly against the front runner, and Donald Trump is clearly the front runner. Uh, Sidestepping criticism of Donald Trump is not going to help him. Uh, Mike, Mike Pence really needs to determine whether or not he wants to take on Trump or not. Uh, you know, he by he stood side by side, shoulder to shoulder with Donald Trump for four years, right up until almost to the moment of the insurrection, and then he then they had a schism, obviously. And right now, Mike Pence is um, you know he's trying to run as a pre-Trump conservative fiscal conservatism, social conservatism, free markets, national security hawk. But he may have missed the moment. You know, that's not where the party is anymore. It's become very populist, protectionist, in many respects, isolationist. Now, Carolyn, he, he did try to lean into that criticism of the president in, in ways that he hasn't in previous months and years. What did you think? I thought it was a tepid critique. I agree with Charlie that, you know, I think Mike Pence would have been an excellent candidate a decade ago. Uh, he used humor tonight in his town hall. He remembered people's names. He referred to his spouse. He talked about his uh, shift from Catholicism to becoming a Pentecostal evangelical. Uh, so a very warm candidate. But at the end of the day, it doesn't feel like he's in this race to win it. It's so strange. He's not going after DeSantis, who he would have to get through in order to get to Trump. And he's definitely really not going after Trump. In fact, he was asked a number of questions directly, and he sidestepped them. And if you look at, at the kind of field so far, you've got Trump at about 50 percent polling. You've got DeSantis around 25 percent. And then you have Pence and Nikki Haley way down at 5 percent. And then the one percenters, Tim Scott and Chris Christie, he, Pence, will not move ahead in the pack unless he actually pushes and competes with both DeSantis mm -hmm. and Trump. And he's just not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Pence's former boss, though, of course, more breaking news uh, about Donald Trump and his legal woes. I want to ask both of you, will this make any difference politically? It might surprise people, you know, what your answer might be. Charlie, first to you. Yeah, well, if, if, if former President Trump is indicted as expected, over the uh, classified document issue down at Mar-a-Lago. I mean, this is a golden opportunity for Trump's campaign opponents to just simply blast him. Uh, the, the issue, of course, is this man has been indicted once so far. He could be indicted two or three more times between now and the Republican convention. And it's such a simple message for these Republican candidates to say, look, this is too great a risk. Do you really want to have a man as the nominee, the standard bearer for the Republican Party, who's been indicted a few times and may be convicted. I mean, that's where these candidates need to fight and stand mm. up and nail them. This, like, after after uh, Trump was indicted over the Stormy Daniels payment, you know, Dan Sanders and, uh, and, and Pence more or less, you know, called it a witch hunt and thought Trump was being uh, treated unfairly and Trump's poll numbers went up. It's almost it, malpractice but as a candidate not to smash him for something like this. They should be on the attack. Right. But Car Carolyn, just to, to Charlie's point there, though, is that really going to make a difference? He still seems to have a vice grip on the nomination here. 
I don't think it will make a difference, Paula. I think it will actually feed into a persecution complex that he has developed. And the more indictments come down, the more his brand loyal uh, followers will support him. I don't know how these competitors in the Republican primary can possibly do damage to Donald Trump. I think Charlie's pointing out a really good point that that in the, in the aftermath of the Stormy Daniels indictment, uh, everyone, you know, his the folks who should have been competing with him were not because they're worried about disaffecting the followers. And these are followers that he has spent the last five and a half years tapping into their fears, mm. telling them that the world has moved on um, and that they're being persecuted by a world that doesn't appreciate them anymore. So I don't know how you beat Donald Trump when he has such a strong mm -hmm. narrative. Now, Donald Trump is still center stage in this campaign, and I'm about to show you why. Chris Christie jumped into the race. He was on CNN with our Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper asked him, look, you were an enabler, enabler of the president. What's happened now? Listen. I thought I could help to make him a better candidate and a better president if he won. Uh, and I didn't want Hillary Clinton to be president. And that's why I ran in the first place. Uh, it turned out I was wrong. I couldn't make him a better candidate and I couldn't make him a better president. Charlie, he was wrong. What do you think? Well, I think it's refreshing that he's uh, at least willing to admit that. And I, and I do think that Chris Christie, you know, he may not be the perfect messenger, but he certainly has chosen the right target. He understands that in order to beat Donald Trump, Somebody needs to take him on directly and frontally. Draw that sharp contrast. Now, maybe Chris Christie is preparing to weaponize himself, uh, you know, and, and maybe going to perform a service as a, uh, a guided <laughs> missile on Donald Trump. He might be willing to do that. And, you know, it might not elevate his own candidacy at the end of the day. But he understands one thing, that the Republican Party cannot win with Donald Trump at the top of the ticket. How much losing can the party take? Underperformance in 2018, uh, 2020, you know, losing the presidency in the Senate, and again, 2022, Republicans certainly underperforming in the House races. So Christie understands this. And I think most Republicans understand that, you know, they want to win again. And maybe this campaign should be about making winning great again uh, for the Republican <laughs> Party. And they simply cannot do it uh, it can't be done with Trump at but, the top of the ticket. And, and, and they're not going to they're not going to win if they don't make the case. There's as a to new why they need to fire him. There's a new there's a new slogan. Last word to Carolyn there on Chris Christie. What do you think? Well, I think he's pulling a 1% for a reason uh, because he is going after a candidate that is most liked. But I agree with Charlie that he's very much kind of throwing himself into the race, not expecting to win, but trying to be that voice of reason that has a position to go after Donald Trump. And it's a precarious position. It's telling that Chris Christie knows he's not going to win, but he's in the race to go after Trump. Yeah, very interesting to see how this race is going to progress. And, and, and again, there are limits to who can be on the debate stage. So we'll see how that um, comes uh, comes together in the uh, following months. Both of you, thank you so much, uh, especially on a momentous political day, as always. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank Paula. You.